Howdy folks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a really great tool that is very useful in calculus and in other areas of math. And it's a very simple tool to create. We call it a sign chart. Sign chart. Okay. Now, a sign chart, when we say sign, what we're talking about is positive or negative. So this sign chart that we're making is basically a chart of positives and negatives. And here's what I mean by that. Let's say that we have some arbitrary function. And let's say that it does this. Let's say that this function crosses over the x-axis here at negative 7. Over here it crosses over the x-axis at positive 4. And then over here it crosses the x-axis at positive 8. Here's what, I, here's what we're basically understanding. This is as far as it goes is that from negative infinity up until negative 7, the graph itself is below the x-axis. Therefore, from negative infinity up to, seven, up to negative 7, this graph has a negative sign. The output values, the, 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 the values of the function have negative values until you get to negative 7. At negative 7, the output value is 0 because it's hitting the x-axis. From negative 7 all the way over to 4, because the graph is above the x-axis, that means that, the gr that this function here has a positive value. All of the output values are positive. Then, from 4 up until 8, because the graph is below the x-axis, all of the output values are negative. And then from 8 on through infinity, this graph is above the x-axis, and therefore, all of its output values are positive. And so, if we were to make a sign chart of this graph, what we would do is we would put a slash, kind of a, kind of a mark, a hash mark, at each of the zeros, negative 7, 4, and 8. And then, in each of these interim periods, between and beyond the hash marks, we would just put the sign of the function. Leading up to negative 7, this graph has a sign of, has a negative sign. Between negative 7 and 4, the graph has a positive sign. The functions, the output values are positive. From 4 up to 8, the output values are negative. And from 8 up to infinity, infinity the output values are positive. That is a sign chart. Okay? And that's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. So what, you're, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the steps kind of over on the side. And these steps, I'll put them over here, I suppose. The very first step, it, let's say that we have some function. Let's say that we have y is equal to um, x squared. Let's see here. Um, minus 2, well, hang on, plus 2x uh, minus 35. There we go. So we've got this. We've got this function here. We want to create a sign chart. The very first thing you want to do is draw a horizontal, well, you know what, let's say it this way. Draw an x-axis. You're drawing an x-axis. and Because that's pretty much what a sign chart is. It's, it's, you don't have an, a y-axis, you only have the x-axis. You're not actually identifying what the values are, you're just identifying whether they are positive or negative, and that's happening along the x-axis. So step one is draw an x-axis. Step two, mark the zeros of the function. on the x-axis. Okay, so here's our x-axis. We want to mark the zeros. Now, for this function, we can actually factor it and identify the zeros. But you may want to use a TI-84 calculator to identify the zeros if it's a more complicated function. But whatever method that you use to identify the zeros, you can identify, the, you have to identify the zeros of this function and mark them on the x-axis. So this function right here will actually factor. It becomes x plus 7 times x minus 5. And so if this is equal to 0, 
This is going to be x plus 7 equals 0 and x minus 5 equals 0. So our first 0 is x equals negative 7 and our second 0 is x equals 5. Okay? So we've got two zeros. One of them is at negative 7. The other one is at 5. And then the last step is step 3. Plug in values between and beyond, between and beyond the zeros to determine whether the function, whether the function is positive, in which case you would put a positive sign, or negative, in which case you would put a negative sign. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take, the, you can pick any number between the zeros. So just pick a number between negative 7 and 5. How about 1? One is between that. Now, I would pick zero. I almost always pick zero if it's not one of the zeros. But just so that you can see you can pick any number, let's choose one. I'm going to plug one into the original function. One squared is one. Two times one is two. So one plus two is three. And three minus 35, that's negative 30, or excuse me, negative 29, right? So, negative, so when we plug one in, we get a negative value. And therefore, we're going to put a minus symbol in between negative 7 and 5. What that minus symbol means, what that negative sign means, is that every output value between negative 7 and 5 is negative. Okay, now, this is assuming that it's a continuous function. If there was a discontinuity in the function, in step 2, I would say mark the zeros of the function on the x-axis and all discontinuities, discontinuities, okay, because technically, technically discontinuities are a reason to separate out two values, or separate the function, okay, but in this case, I did, this function does not have any discontinuities. All right, now we're going to go, we went between the zeros, now we're going to go beyond the zeros. What's a number less than negative 7? How about negative 8? Okay, so we'll put, you know, you can actually plug it into this if you wanted to, into the factored. If we plugged in negative 8, negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1. Negative 8 minus 5 is negative 13. And negative 1 times negative 13, that's positive, positive 13. So less than negative 7, those values are all positive. Now let's go above 5. Pick a number larger than 5. How about, let's do 10. And let's go back to the original. What's 10 squared? Well, that's 100. Plus, well, what's 2 times 10? That's 20. Minus 35. Well, 100 plus 20, that's 120. 120 minus 35. Who cares what it is? We know it's positive. And so we're going to put a positive sign here. And so what we've just done is we have just created a sign chart. Now, I'm not going to explain to you what to use the sign chart for in this video because you can actually use a sign chart for a bunch of things. So the purpose of this video is to just show you how to make a sign chart. We're going to make one more sign chart using the TI-84 calculator so that you can see how to use the TI-84 calculator to make a sign chart. All right, here's a function we got, f of x. I actually used this in my last video when I showed you how to find the zeros of a, um, on a TI-84 calculator. So if you remember this function, you're already ahead. This will be good practice for you. Sometimes doing the same thing two, three, four times, same problem a bunch of times can really improve your knowledge of whatever that skill is. So here we go. We got a function f of x is equal to x cubed minus x squared minus 12x plus 11. We are going to use the TI-84 calculator or a TI-83 if that's what you have, and we're going to create a sign chart. Step one says draw an x-axis. So I'm going to draw an x-axis, and I'm going to put f of x right next to it, because that's what I like to do. I like to mark the, uh, the name of the function that, this, that the sign chart uh, is reflecting. 
And so now step two says mark the zeros of the function on the x-axis and, uh, and all discontinuities. There are no discontinuities. This is a polynomial function, so there's no discontinuities. Uh, but in order to accomplish this step two, we now have to go to our steps for identifying the zeros of a function. And to find the zeros of a function in the TI-84, the first step is to key your function into the y equals. So I'm going to turn on my calculator. I'm going to press the y equals button. And so now I'm going to key in this function into y1. x to the power of 3, then I'm going to come out of the exponent, minus x squared minus 12x plus 11. Now, sometimes what people do is before they will graph, before they, they won't hit the graph, you can hit the graph button, which is what we normally do. But as an alternative to hitting the graph button, you could just press zoom 6, and that will give you the normal graph picture, the 20 by 20 uh, graph screen. Okay? And you can see here there are 1, 2, 3 zeros, three places where the graph crosses over the x-axis, which makes sense because this is an x to the third power function, and any third degree function can have up to three zeros. Okay? So let's identify those three zeros. So I'm going to hit second trace option two, right? Then it says left bound, and it looks like this one all the way to the left. It looks like that's maybe between one, two, three, negative four, and negative three. So it says left bound, I'm going to hit negative 4, enter. Right bound, negative 3, enter. And then on guess, I'll just press enter. And it says I have a 0 at negative 3.431375. So I'm going to put a hash mark here. And I'm going to write negative 3.431375. There we go. That's that 0 right there. Now I'm going to move on to the next one. That one looks like it's probably between 0 and 2. So let's try that. Second, trace, option 2. Left bound, 0. Right bound, 2. Guess, I'll just press enter, and I get 0.91048267. So I'll maybe put that right here. I'm going to have to squeeze it in because these are big numbers. So I'll put 0.91048267. All right, there's my second zero. Now my third zero is over here, maybe at two, three, between three and four. So I'll hit second, trace, option two, left bound three, right bound four, guess, I'll just press enter, and I get 3.52, so I'll put a hash mark over here, 3.52, So that's step two. I've marked the zeros of the function on the x-axis. Now, step three, it just says plug in values between and beyond the zeros. Now, I could use the calculator to do this. I could also take my values and plug them into this by hand and find out whether they are positive or negative. Another possibility is I can just look at the graph right here and I can see that at first the values are below the x-axis, then they're above, then below, then above. So I know that it goes negative values, then positive values, then negative values, then positive values. But here's a great skill that you can practice right now. You can use the trace feature. So we're already in the graph. Let's think of a number that's less than negative 3. How about negative 5? And then a number between negative 3 and 0.91, how about 0? How about a number between 0.91 and 3.5? How about 2? And then a number larger than 3.5? Let's choose 4. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace these numbers and find in the calculator and find out whether they are they give you a positive output or a negative output. And the way that you trace values, the way that you plug in numbers in the TI-84, if you're in the graph screen, is you press the trace button. Nothing but the trace button. So I'm going to press trace. And then I'm going to press negative 5. So negative 5. And then in the bottom it says x equals negative 5. And I'll just press enter, and look what it tells me. It tells me the output value is negative 79. That means that beyond negative 3.43, all those values are negative. Now I'm going to key in 0. And unlike the, uh, the 0 feature, it'll stay in trace mode for as, until I do something else. If I press 0, x equals 0, press enter, it says that the output is 11, right? 
that's positive. And so between negative 3.4 and 0.91, the output values are positive. Now I'm going to try 2. I'm going to key in 2 and then press Enter. And look at it. The output is, oh, there's a cursor right on top of it. It looks like negative 9 to me, negative 9. And so that means the output values are negative between here and here. And now I'm going to try 4, key in 4, enter. And it says that the output value is 11 again, positive. And so therefore, the output values are positive. And now what I have is I have a sign chart for this function, which can then be used to do all kinds of interesting stuff. So here's what I would recommend that you do, is I would try making up functions, find functions, find one of the worksheets that I gave you, and create a bunch of sign charts so that you can practice this skill. And then in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use a sign chart to be able to identify whether, uh, uh, when you look at a function, you'll be able to identify the relative extrema, and I'll define what that means, and the intervals of increase and decrease.